Hello, hello, and welcome to In Sound Health, where we are talking all things holistic living to balance the mind, the body, and soul with your hosts. Athena and Candy. We welcome you to our very first episode. So let's go ahead and dive in. Who are we and what are we doing here? Um, first, we'll start with Candy. This is beautiful Candy. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Candy. I am a uh, yoga instructor. I'm the owner of a yoga studio here in Belle Plaine, Iowa. Um, I opened it about a year ago and um, it's going great. Um, really receptive, even in a small rural community. Um, and so I have the yoga studio, practice and teach yoga. Um, and then I also am a sound practitioner. So I do sound healing baths for groups. And then I also do um, individual sound healing sessions. Um, I also practice Kundalini Reiki. And I'm a lover of all things energetic, um, astrology, um, crystals. Um, I love essential oils. Uh, I even love nature and my garden. I have um, plants galore. Um, and I love to garden and get out and, and into nature. Um, I'm also a mom. Just... <laughs> just a regular person, regular mom. Um, I have three kids. Um, my oldest is um, almost 25 and is um, just got married. So I've already gone through that leaving the nest. Um, but then I also have two at home. So I'm still doing the mom thing every single day. So, and um, I am so excited to be here with Athena and doing this because this is um, growth for me. Um, I struggle with um, speaking um, authentically about who I am and um, my gifts. And so this is growth for me. And this is what I need to share with all of you as well. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so happy that we're doing this together. How fun. I know. My name is Athena and I live in another small little town, not the same town as Candy, but I'm in Marengo, Iowa, and I'm a mom with two kids as well, two kids, two dogs, um, and I'm a multidimensional healer. So um, I really help people to kind of dive into their shadow side to not like kill the ego, but actually to embrace those parts of us as little golden nuggets to unveil those places that still need love. I'm also really connected to nature and the stars. And so I work interdimensionally. So I, I take my clients into their energy field, into their body, into their chakras, into the earth. And through that, I truly believe is where we can expand our consciousness even more. Um, just a little side note about me is when I was younger, I, I suffered some trauma where I got really good at projecting my energy outside of my body for to protect me. And it took a lifetime of me to actually go, oh, I have to actually come into my body. So I'm now, I don't call myself a coach, but I am like an embodiment guide. So I help people to come back to the body. Um, and I was a yoga teacher. I still sub for candy every now and then. Um, I taught fitness, um, personal training and yoga for uh, about 13 years. I'm also a lover of essential oils and crystals, all things healing. Um, I love using Oracle cards, tarot cards, um, pretty much anything I can get my hands on. I want to try it out. I, I love to explore and I am always a student but I'm also a teacher. So what I learn and what I begin to embody, then I have that calling from spirit to teach it and to show other people and, and understanding that not everyone is going to be on my same path. And everybody has to find, like Candy said, their authentic life, their authentic truth and how, how best can each person um, use that. And so with that, um, you know, it's like, we are doing this, this podcast, if you want to call it that, this, these episodes, because there's so many people who are stepping onto this spiritual path when they're saying, oh, something doesn't feel right. But 
what I've been doing isn't quite working anymore. I, I want something different or they've had vivid dreams or their body is aching and the doctors can't explain what it is, right? And the, the medicine may not be fully working and they're looking for something else to help support them along the way, right? And again, I think me and Candy are both firm believers of both Eastern medicine and Western medicine, that there's a need for both. Um, again, just like our light and our shadow, it's, it's not to be separated, but it's to be integrated as us as a whole being. And so how we can do that. And I think that Candy and I both bring so much of that to the table in our own aspects. So I'm really excited for all of you guys that are gonna be watching this um, to get a little bit of uh, wisdom, right? To get a little bit of wisdom. So we decided to call this In Sound Health and I'm gonna let Candy go with this first. So what does In Sound Health mean to you? Um, well, this is very uh, obviously a huge passion of mine um, being a sound practitioner. But in sound health, I, I really believe that as energetic bodies, um, we can heal our own bodies with our own intention and doing things for our, on our own, for ourselves. Um, I mean, obviously there are things from um, Western medicine that are, are necessary, but I truly am a believer of healing from, from yourself. Um, and with sound, um, for instance, my own story, I, um, several years ago, gosh, it's been uh, eight, eight years ago now, I was really struggling, um, went to several doctors and um, I had hormonal issues. I had kidney stones. I was fatigued. I, you name it, I had it. So, but I physically like would go to a doctor and they would run tests and they're like, you're fine. There's nothing wrong with you. And I kept saying there is, there's something we're just not finding it there. There's something. And, um, so with my kidney stones, obviously, um, when you have them treated with uh, Western um, philosophy, they use sound waves to break up the stones through, in surgery. And so I was researching more on that and, and um, you know, Google, <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of stuff out there, but I really looked for um, educational, you know, legit uh, information. And so I started researching, um, sound, these sound waves and came across sound healing. And I was blown away by the research that, um, there is about how sound can heal the, the body, the frequencies, the vibrations. So I bought my first set of tuning forks no, I mean, really $25 for a C and a G and um, started using my forks on my um, core of my body around the kidney area and um, daily, two, three times a day, whenever I had 10, 15 minutes, I would um, use my forks and went back to the dot, my urologist in uh, you know, after about six months of um, practicing this up daily. And he says, what are you doing? Well, and of course I was doing other things too. You know, I had changed, you know, changed my diet a little bit. He was using oils. I was doing, practicing yoga, relaxing yoga because there are different forms, but I needed to slow down. <laughs> um, and, but he says, what are you doing? And I said, why? And he's like, because they have significantly improved. And when I talk about kidney stones, you know, some people have a few here and there, my kidneys were full of particles. Like it was just unreal. And so I was super excited and he's like, well, whatever it is you're doing, he goes, I, you know, because I said, I told him and he's like, oh, 
which, you know, <laughs> a medical doctor can't say if that's actually what's working or not, but he said, keep doing it. And so I did. And I can say that I do still have kidney stones. I mean, it's just going to be part how it's actually how fear manifests in my body. Um, and so I will always have them, but this is a way that I can contain and um, heal myself, you know, when, when it comes up. So sound for me, um, firm believer in all the things that it can do, um, whether it's stress relief, physical ailments, um, you know, being a sound practitioner, I see people come in and sometimes I'm blown away by the results, you know, with people that um, have physical pain. Um, and we work on that physical, but what I normally um, seem to find is that that physical manifestation of pain is actually something more mental and emotional being held in the body. And when they finally get that release, um, which often happens with the vibration of sound, um, they get that emotional release, lots of tears sometimes, lots of deep breaths, lots of releasing in the muscle, twitching in the body. But when that release comes, the physical ailment, the physical pain in the body disappears. You know, we've released that. So um, yeah, sound, uh, sound health is, um, it's the way we're, we're moving forward. I, I am so excited. Every time I turn around, there's more people reaching out and talking about the sound and, oh my gosh, I did this or, oh my gosh, I've, I've experienced that. And I am so excited for where we're headed with it. So yeah. I love all that. I had so many little nuggets that came into that. I'm like, oh, uh, writing notes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, won't, I won't get too off, off center. Um, yeah, yeah, I know. But yeah. And I think, and I think that's the beautiful thing is people are remembering that this is a way, and this isn't something new. And oh. for me, like my soul remembers the ancient ways of like, Egypt and even before there with Atlantis and Lemuria and how sound was so important. So if we want to get more to the, the soul part of the sound, which is mm -hmm. kind of where I come in is I remember that through my own activation of my voice through what I call uh, soul language or light language, which basically came to me. I was in meditation and I was um, very connected with my guides and they said, you need to start doing this. And it was so bizarre because they said, you need to go live in a particular group that was over 6,000 mystics. So other people learning and practicing their gifts. And um, I was like, what? I don't even know. They're like, no, just go. And I trusted, I trusted in myself and I trusted in the guidance I was receiving. And so I did, I went live for like 30 seconds and just started speaking um, some will say like, you might have heard it speaking in tongues. Like that's another term that people have used, but really that's like, they, there can have a negative, um, meaning behind that because of maybe religious dogma. So it's kind of removing that religious dogma and going, what is this for me? And it's, it's really my truth and who I am and how I am bringing sound healing back into the world through this soul remembering and when we go back to the ancient times sound yes was absolutely used for our bodies it was used to heal the emotion and the mental but it also was how we moved objects we actually used sound if you guys follow like the history channel or even like gaia tv there's some incredible evidence that they are starting to reveal these days i would say the last like 10 years, especially a lot of the pieces are coming back in, into place when it comes to sound healing. They have like tools and things that they use to literally move megalithic structures. This wasn't something where they had like a crane that we now have. They used sound frequency to move huge 10 ton objects. Like it just blows my mind. And I know you're getting so goosebumpy over there. I can feel yeah, it. I know. 
Um, yeah, that's why I say every time we turn around, I read something more on um, what sound has done for us. I just, I'm blown away every time I just, something else comes up and yeah, I, and you're talking about your light language and um, for everybody, it's something different. Um, what sound can do for them and how they heal. You know, some people tone or chant or, um, you know, mantras of different kinds. And you just sometimes have to play with everything a little bit till you find your thing. And um, yeah, you know, so mine, I, I love when I go to um, and do sound baths, group sound baths. I, I, and I love to hear the feedback. There's so, I just, I love the fact when people say, oh, when the drums came in, <laughs> I just, I'm like, yeah. And they're like, I had this, like, like I remembered back when another life or something, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but I just felt like I was in another world. And I'm like, yes. That's where we're tapping into that remembering of um, who we really, really are. So. Yeah, a away from away from the forgetfulness or what some people will call the collective sleep or the blanket of amnesia that's kind of been placed over humanity, which we can do a whole another session, a whole other video on that. But um, yeah, it is. It's remembering who we truly are at soul level and how it's, again, it's not separate from our body. We integrated and incarnated into this beautiful body, this material, like this body is amazing. And our cells respond, just like you were talking about your kidney stones responding to sound. Our cells do that. Our DNA, we can actually activate our DNA. We can stimulate our genetic molecular structure to program it to how we want to program it. So this is why it is important sometimes like the music that we choose to listen to maybe, and I'm not saying like don't ever because we are also here to experience all of life. We're here to experience what brings us joy. Um, and sometimes we need that like heavy metal, like ass kicking kind of music. Other times, like if we have an intention to really increase our vibration and to start to heal something within ourselves, we can choose those frequencies you know, by going to, to candy or coming to me for light language or listening to something on YouTube, right? There's so many frequencies that you can find and amazing resources that can actually help you to reprogram your DNA. And that is really, I think where so many people are, are starting to kind of maybe grasp a little bit like, oh, okay. It's just like, you know, everyone's been talking about the, the mental aspect. You can reprogram your brain all the time, right? Your thoughts and things like that. But let's talk about the DNA because when we get into the DNA, that is soul level and ancestral. So that is again, going back all the way to, you know, origination or all the way to um, those past lives where the drums are bringing out that more primordial being that that energy that's within us and having those flashbacks are on purpose it's it's something that your soul was like okay at a certain time you're going to meet this certain person and it's she's going to activate you to a new remembering okay and so that's kind of what we do we like activate people into remembering who they are and i think sound is it is all of life because everything is made of energy and everything is made of sound and so it really is the way it is the way to shift and grow and expand and awaken and and see new consciousness onto the planet yes absolutely oh let's <laughs> <laughs> just make some noise here <laughs> i know like i need to <laughs> well and i want to i want to say something else here too because i even so one of the vows of contracts that I had to remove from my own soul in this lifetime was the vow of silence. And I held that for my ancestors. So it was my mother and my mother's mother and my mother's mother, mother, and, and back and back and back. And not just my genetic lineage, but also my soul had other parts um, that were capped, strangled, you know, yeah. hurt 
to a place where I wasn't able to speak. And so I remember even when I started doing fitness, like I would kind of forcefully breathe, you know, and it took a long time. I'm like, what is, why is my throat so raspy? Oh, cause I'm forcefully. And, and then when I started to finally take yoga, which was like, felt like a hundred years ago, I was uncomfortable to slow down. I was used to fast paced, heavy breathing, do, 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 do. And it took me a while to like actually get comfortable to even hearing my own breath. And I know you've probably experienced this when you tell people to sigh it out, like you don't hear anything because people are like, I don't want to make any noise. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I always find it like I, and I used to be the same way. I mm -hmm. used to, I would be like, okay, <sighs> just shh, as quiet as you can be. Um, now, oh gosh, let it all out. And I really make it, um, I try to make my, the breath in my classes a real focus. Um, so do people do get more comfortable hearing themselves um, because it's not a, all, you know, just the act of breathing, but the listening to your breath and what, um, what that can do for you as well. Yeah. I always used to um, call myself a chronic breath holder because I would, be going about my business throughout the day and all of a sudden notice I'm holding my breath, not even aware that I was just taking very shallow breaths, um, to move, to move and do daily chores, you know, and I just didn't realize it. And with, uh, the practice of yoga, that's really when, um, my practice got so much deeper, was because I was not only doing the poses for my, my body, but I was can making that connection between my body, the breath and the mind. And when that clicked, man, the whole game changed for me. I was like, this, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, this is a yoga practice. And so, um, yeah, breath is a huge part of um, uh, my classes. It's also a huge part of um, my sound healing. I always, um, you know, ask people to take those deeper breaths, slow, be mindful, notice what your breath is doing, um, you know, before we get into the, to the practice. And then after, take notice again, how, how it, did it change? How did it shift? And, um, yeah. And, and I love, know, and I, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say, and I love, yeah, that whole like reconnecting because if you think about it, breath was the original sound. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even in, even in the Bible, you know, and he said, let there be light. He said, he spoke it into existence. You know, and if you go back into like the, the Egyptians, they used the breath of life. They used the onk of life. They would breathe through this contraption to, to expand. Right. Um, and so, yes, it's, it's absolutely all part of it. And so understanding our breath and using it to transmute your, you know, when you're having those days, instead of like holding it in, cause that was the same way I would do that too where I'd forcefully be breathing. And I'm like, what am I doing? I'm like, well, I don't do that. Oh no, you totally do that. <laughs> but it also like gets you into another place. When I'm afraid, I hold my breath or mm -hmm. I'm trying to force things. For me, it's, I'm trying to force things into being. I have very strong will. So I try to force things to happen instead of like slowing and surrendering and letting my breath flow naturally. Right. So that's been my journey is instead of forcing, how can I surrender a little bit and just allow the natural breath to flow? And trusting in that, right? Trusting in myself, trusting in the breath. And that really does, like you said, it opens your practice up. It opens up your ability to heal and to receive even more. And that's something that I do with pretty much all of my sessions is I always start with breath. Then I start with some sort of guided visualization, go into the chakras, opening up the chakras, and then we continue to breathe. And, and even sometimes when I'm working with someone, I'll notice their breath stops. And I'm always like, nope, <laughs> you got to keep on breathing because that that's going to help transmute this heavier energy. Mm -hmm. So screaming, right? Screaming into your pillow, <sighs> you know, like 
Just let it out in those moments when you're feeling stressed. Who cares what other people think about you? You are literally letting things go. So you're not taking it home with you to the family, right? Or or you're not saving it for some rainy day where you're going to like let the dragon out. (laughs) It's important. It's a process. And and again, too, like I used to have judgment on myself when I would breathe a certain way or I'd make a noise in front of people. And then it was like, wait, let's just breathe. And like Candy said, acknowledge that breath how does it feel what does it sound like without judgment like oh it sounds shaky I sound because we can go into that dialogue in our mind as well right right yeah I find the car (laughs) the car is my most valuable place for releasing some horrible sounds (laughs) um you know you're having a bad day you get out of work and you know it may not be socially acceptable to scream at the top of your lungs in your office. And hey, you know, we get it, but um, go out to your car and let it out. Um, Yeah, I find most of my release happens in my car um, for whatever reason. It's a safe place, you know? Um, lion's breath, holding the steering wheel and pulling my chest forward and making the, all the noise. And also, you know, with, um, that being said, listening to music and singing along with it is also, um, you know, a release as well. And it's, um, sound healing your own voice, just hearing your own voice and having that vibration in your body of your own voice is healing. So, um, you know, the worst thing that we can possibly do is hold it in and um, push it down, um, repress the things. Um, it's, it's the worst thing we can do for ourselves. And, and sometimes I feel like um, as a society, it's more acceptable to be repressed um, you know, don't, don't show that kind of emotion, you know, you know, crazy ladies that, you know, you're crazy ladies. If you let it out and you're screaming and voicing your opinion and, um, but yeah, we're, we're so much better off releasing than, than repressing. And I think so many people are starting on that path of, we'll say the wild woman, right? Where in the past, the wild woman was suppressed, right? That archetypal energy of speaking your authentic truth and holding your power and being like, no, this is who I am. This is what I'm here to do. And I'm going to love myself and express myself how I feel fit. And so that can take a lot of, you know, work. And I'm still working through that and figuring out what, what that means to me. But I think you know, I know, I don't think, I I know that the divine feminine on the planet is rising. And part of that is accepting of our wild woman and, and allowing her space to be and create. And that's the long haired, wild, crazy haired woman, you know, who speaks and um, loving. And, and I just see her like wearing red. It's like the Mary Magdalene energy, right? The wild woman who knows her truth is the path of love and she will do anything necessary to continue to follow her soul on that journey of expression. And um, I think there's, that, that's rising. I mean, that's rising on the planet and it, and it has been, and it's just going to continue to go. And everyone kind of has their own like marking within their soul, like when that's going to happen, you know, like what, and it doesn't mean you're going to be a wild woman forever, but it might be like in a moment of time where you need that, you need that strength to speak your truth, to say no to an unhealthy relationship or to say yes to taking care of yourself in a new way. And so that archetype brings us to that, to that edge and beyond. So, yeah. 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 So, okay. Well, today's Halloween when we're recording this, which is awesome. So the other thing we wanted to talk about. (laughs) Another year around the sun. Um, And I feel like this year, this last year has definitely been lots of ups and downs and lots of growth for me. (laughs) Lots of things shifting, but I feel like this next year is just going to be even better. It just feels even better. It feels right. (laughs) So I'm going to, I'm going to 
just go with that flow. Um, so for Halloween, what are some of the practices that you do? Um, well, I, I'll be honest, Athena. Um, I'm not a fan of Halloween. <laughs> and it, yes, I'm not. And it stems from my childhood. Um, I was a quiet, I'm very introverted, but, um, as a child though, I was painfully shy, painfully, like I didn't speak. And my mom um, was all about the costumes. And so all of my costumes every single year was this huge ordeal of like homemade costume all, I mean, it was to the hill, top notch costumes. And for a child that was extremely painfully shy, did not want to be noticed or looked at or spoke to, it was torture, complete torture. And you have, you go to the contests and everybody's looking at you. And um, I just, I was that child that was traumatized by um, Halloween costumes. So I love fall and I love celebrating um the season. I love the season, but the actual commercialized part of Halloween, um, not for me, <laughs> not for me. Um, but Hey, everybody has a thing, right? Um, but for myself, um, this time of year is about, um, the ending uh, you know, the ending of the summer season, the ending of harvesting, you know, all the work that we put into this year, we're starting to wind down. And for me, that means looking back, um, what worked for me for the year and what didn't, and kind of refocusing um, for this next year, year ahead. So I set lots of um, new intentions um, at this time of year. And most of them, I kind of looking back through my journals, seem to be more related to my body at this time of the year. Um, taking notice of my body, what kind of um, rest I need physically and um, the changes that I can make for um, feeling physically better because, you know, you kind of start to get into the longer nights The it's darker so much earlier. And, you know, we just kind of get into this maybe rut <laughs> where we don't move as much as when we're outside in nature and the days are longer and, and the weather is warmer. Um, so I really make changes to, um, that part of my my routine and I find that I rest more um my exercise I don't I don't call it exercise but I guess other people would probably call it exercise but just maintaining my physical strength um changes changes for me in the winter months and um along with my diet I make some different um um, diet changes. I follow um, an Ayurvedic practice, not too like strictly, but um, I incorporate that into my daily practices. And um, so my diet changes. This is when I drink more tea <laughs> than probably all the rest of the year combined. Um, my go-to in this time of the year is a night tea and I get excited about it. It's, it, you know, I kind of, you know, during the summer you're wanting to cool off, you know, and you just don't drink near. And then I get excited because, oh, it's time for tea again. Um, and so, yeah, I, I incorporate that at this time of year. And, um, but what I actually do as far as um, on this, day and for the next seven days um 
I lost my father five years ago. So um, for me, um, he's my go-to um, when I really need guidance. And um, so on this year, on this day, and then for seven days, I just have my picture of him and I set a candle and I light it for seven days um, just to show him the way here um, to visit with us and, um, you know, so we can, um, communicate, uh, because he's with me all the time, but this time of year, it's just so much easier to connect. Um, yeah, the signs and the synchronicities and the messages, um, are really, really strong at this time of year. So that's, um, that's my big ritual is um, setting out my candle for my dad and lighting that. And, um, and of course I do um, the whole trick or treat with my kids, but they're starting to get a little older. And so that's changing too. Um, but that's what we, that's, that's our plan for today. Yep. <laughs> I think that's amazing. I think that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, um, I'm going to take my kids trick or treating too. I used to get all dressed up and go out drinking, but that's been a long time ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I do the same thing. I actually already, I bought myself some flowers some roses today. I'll take a picture and probably post on social media later, but, um, I set up an altar for my ancestors. And, um, again, just a little recap, like I wasn't super close to my family. Like I, we weren't really close. Um, and I always felt that I was, I didn't fit in because what I was being taught just didn't feel right all the time. And so that was hard for me. And so our families were never super close. Um, but what I realized is like, I started to remember my soul incarnations and my soul family. So I was receiving a lot of support from the other beyond the veil, right. From my spirit guides and, um, the ascended masters that I choose to work with. And, but through that understanding them and celebrating them this time of the year, then I started to slowly like start to connect with my ancestors. And so now I have a big altar that I have set up crystals galore feathers like I have one in my in my bedroom that has little trinkets from like family members that I have gotten over the years and that's like a way to celebrate them and to honor them um and then I have the big one that I did which I'll I'll what I do is I decorate a pumpkin and so I use whatever herbs I use cacao I'll put honey on it or whatever I want on it and then I set it out on Halloween night and Two years ago, I actually started that practice. And two years ago, the first time I set it out, that pumpkin was gone the next day. And in its place was a blue jay feather. Yeah, goosebumps, right? Oh, like yeah. it, the, and the magic that happened all leading to that was just like, oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, I kind of like will write some stuff down and then I'll burn it. And then I do that little pumpkin thing. Mm -hmm. And now I'm trying to get the kids involved with that a little bit too. So they can start to honor their ancestors, even if we don't know who they are, like understanding that they're still part of us and that we are here um, doing our own internal work to, to basically bless our entire lineage, right? Mm -hmm. Bless all of our ancestors. And so even if you don't have a practice the one thing I would recommend for everyone is just taking a moment, lighting a candle and just saying, I bless you. I bless all of my ancestors forever because we have to remember that our heart and our energy and the way that humans are expanding now, we have that ability. We don't have to go through anyone else to be blessing others. We have that ability. And so if anything, just light a candle and, and just bless everyone. You don't need to know their names. And, and that really does ripple out into your Akash, it ripples out into your whole family line. And the more that you can do that, the more that you offer that, the more your heart opens and the more you get to explore and expand moving past the karma and moving into your dharmic path. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a little bit about what I do, I guess. <laughs> and I'm going to probably, I'll probably put a little bit of makeup on and go out trigger treating and I might put my devil horns on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did my dressing up, um, over the weekend for, um, myself. So, um, I'm going to take it. I'm going to be 
pretty low key tonight. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's always fun to, um, you know, explore that witchy side of yourself. <laughs> And remembering too that, yeah, that witchy side of us is, is our connection to the cycles. Just like you said, it's a connection to the cycles. It's honoring where your body is at. It's honoring where the earth is moving to. And it's honoring those rhythms that we can connect to. And the more that we're aware of that, instead of thinking there's something wrong for us, because we can't go, go, go like that fire energy of the summer. And we we're starting to like pull back and withdraw a little bit. There's a purpose for that. There's not anything wrong with you. You know, it's, it's your internal rhythm connecting to the rhythm of the universe, the, of the earth. Right. And since we're connected to her as one, like earth and us are holographically one, we're going to feel that too. And the more that we can tune into that by yoga, sound healing, Reiki, DNA activation, like whatever it is, Yes. whatever it is that's floating your boat like the more we can tune into those things the more we will grow and expand and it will be for the better of the planet yeah absolutely i always say um you know people come into a class and they're like oh and it 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 go you know and the seasons you know you you feel people's energy change um with the seasons and this time of year, everybody starts to be like, I'm, I'm so much tight, more tired. And, um, and I always say rest mm -hmm. and I have to listen to my own advice too, because we do live in a, a time when it is more acceptable to go, 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 go. than it seems to be to just take your time and, and slow things down. Um, but yeah, I always say, well, rest, we should rest. My classes um, change, you know, at this time of the year. Um, not all of them. I mean, I still um, have some, some intense classes where we do a lot more movement, but the majority of my classes slow down and um, we rest our bodies a bit more, tune into our physical bodies and how they they feel at this time of the year um, compared to the other times. So yeah. I love that. All right. Well, I want to say before we go, um, what is one tool or tip or yoga pose or, or sound frequency that you want to give people to explore over this, mm -hmm. you know, fall season? Oh goodness. I have lots of tips. <laughs> Um, um, let's see, I, I guess I would choose a yoga practice that's more restorative, um, get some pillows and some blankets, um, and use them to, to support the body, uh, you know, like reclined butterfly pose, you know, opening up the hips, opening up the chest, you know, reclining in that. And just um, a more restorative practice, um, you know, for the, the next couple of months. I mean, you can still do your, um, your other exercise, you know, cardio, get your heart rate. But, you know, for that, I would even suggest just walking outside, just getting out in nature and walking outside and being um, in mother nature's energetic field with learning to let go at this time of the year, you know, looking around, everything's kind of going into a rest mode and go with that. You're the same, you know, you, 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 we are connected. We are the same. We are all one. And so when she's going through that cycle, um, take notice and be like, I can too. I can too. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. I loved your little dog too. <laughs> it's so cute. I um, know. <laughs> it's not, it's not good. I, I'm surprised mine aren't barking. So well, <laughs> she, rough. she was told that if she doesn't be quiet, she has to go in the other room. <laughs> she just looked at me like. <laughs> I love that. And something you just said too, like, you know, this is that what they talk about in transformation or the butterfly, right? This is that death process. 
right? And so we have to let those things go. And so it would be great if you could write down some things today um, or as you listen to this, like what is no longer serving you? What doesn't feel good? Like Candy had said, reviewing, like where has this last year been for you? What worked, what didn't work? And maybe burning those things that no longer serve you and then rewriting what it is that you want for this next season and, and listening and honoring your body. Um, and then I also want to say a crystal because I love using crystals too. Um, this is... Oh, I don't know if you can see it very good. This is, um, I never say it right. It's Atlantis site. And so this one's actually really good with connecting to the fairies. It's connecting to your ancestors, which is really important right now. The ancestors can teach us about how to go through these cycles of nature because they've done it and they were much more closer to the earth and the cycles than you know what many of us are now i mean we're getting back into that but so you can call on them you can place this in your non-dominant hand and bring it to your heart center and so it's in in prayer position and call on your ancestors the fairy and also mother earth this is very a stone closely related to her and really call them in and and ask for that wisdom and you know um that insight to the seasons and to um, the knowledge and wisdom that the ancestors have to, to help you on your path forward. Um, another thing that I thought would be really cool for you, Candy, this stone is aw awesome for like fairy gardens or put it in your plants or put it in your trees or put it in your garden. And this brings forward those um, kindred spirits that can help with that wisdom and the information of the cycles. So I thought that was just perfect. Yes. Love it. Oh, well, this was so much fun and I look forward to our next one. And I hope that all of you guys watching will um, continue to listen in and let us know your feedback in the comments. Um, this will be on our my YouTube, but I will put all of Candy's links to um, get a session with her. I highly recommend her. She's amazing. Or if you want to book a session with me, um, I would love that as well. So we'll make sure to put all that in the um, comment section below. And I hope you guys all have a great day. Bye.